So welcome to module 3.4 and in this module we will be uh, seeing one more memory element the last that we will be seeing for uh, construction of our architecture namely the program counter. What is this program counter? The use of this program counter why we have got this name all these things we will see at a later stage. But this program counter essentially works on this. So it is a register, this is a basically a register. So what will be the, regi the, the register that we have described in the previous module that register basically has a load signal and the input and an output. When the load is 1, when the load is 1 and you give a tick whatever is there on the input will go to the register and when you give a talk whatever is there in the register will come out as an output. So this is how this is a clocked input, uh, clocked output register works, right. So we will use this register so to basically construct this program counter, we will call this as the PC and what is this PC? Basically it is based on what you call as this priority logic. So the PC behaves like this. So there are three inputs to this PC, three control inputs to this PC namely reset, load and increment. And there is a data input which is in which is W bits and out is nothing but what is stored in the PC. Now we will quickly tell you how these three signals behave, right. If reset equal to 1, irrespective of whatever is the value of ink and load, so that is the important thing. If reset is equal to 1, independent of what is increment or load, your what the content of your PC should become 0. That is what this says. Now we will see one by one. If reset equal to 1, your out is 0. If reset equal to 1, then I do not care what is ink, what is load, your output will become 0, right. Then, so that is why I said I give highest priority for reset, right. If reset is 0, then only you go and see whether load equal to 1. When reset is 0 and load equal to 1, then your out will become, your PC will store whatever is there on the in. So when your reset is 0 and load equal to 1, irrespective of what is INC, which is called increment, your out will take the value, the value in the in will get stored in the PC. Now when both reset and load are 0 and increment is 1, whatever is stored or remembered in this PC that will get incremented. So if I give increment equal to 1, whatever is stored in the PC will get incremented by 1. So if this PC stores say 10, then it becomes 11. And if all the 3 are 0, reset, load, increment all are 0, then the output whatever is there in the PC will never change, correct. So this is a priority logic because reset gets the highest priority. If reset is 0, then load gets the next priority. If load is 0, then increment gets the next priority. If increment is also 0, then the value is remembered. You got this? So this is the basic uh, way by which this program counter works and there is a priority logic here. Now what is, uh, what is interesting now is how do we code this priority logic? How do we construct this program counter from the basic register? Of course, there is a register in which there is a in and out, right. Let me call this as reg in and this as reg load and of course the out is out, okay. Now when will this register get loaded? Please note that the register will remain the same, the value in this register will remain the same when all the three fellows are 0, when your reset is 0, load is 0 and increment is 0, then what will happen? Your out will be the same. So your load, your reg load need not change, reg load need not change if all these three fellows are 0. 
right. If one of them is 1 then of course your edge load should change because your register can potentially get a new value right. If reset is 1 then the register will get a 0 if reset is uh, load is 1 of course you will get whatever is given as an input this input will come into this register and uh, uh, and if your increment is 1 whatever that register stored that new value that incremented value will come in. So, when I am constructing the program counter using register I call the input to that register as regin and the load input to the register as reg load that reg load will become 1 if one of this increment load or reset becomes 1 if all of them are 0 then the reg load can be 0 because the whatever values there in the register need to be retained it should not be changed. So, the reg load can become 0. So, the reg load is basically re re realized as an R function of reset ink and load R of reset ink and load will give you reg load right right. So, if reset ink and load all are zeros, then this register will retain the remembered value. So, when all res let us go and see this priority logic if all reset load and ink are 0 then out will remain remembered and this particular functionality is implemented by making this reg load as 0. So, that in the next tick nothing will get changed in the register. Now, let us see when one of them is 1 then of course, this register value is going to change. So, your reg load becomes 1 then what how it is going to change I need to find out how regin behaves. This particular circuit <coughs> which I am currently marking in green will tell you how regin will change what will be regin when the reg load becomes 1 that is one of these reset ink and load becomes 1 which makes reg load as 1 then what would be regin. Now, this is the priority right your reset is when the reset is 1 you get false that means regin is 0. So, when your reset is 1 <coughs> your reg load becomes 1 because reset is 1 the R of this will become 1 and what will you get in regin false 0. So, so in the next tick your register will become 0. So, essentially your PC actually becomes 0 PC is used by <coughs> PC is realized using this regin plus this circuitry this whole thing that I am marking in a larger green square <coughs> implements this PC that we have shown here. So, now you see that when reset is 1 independent of load and ink as you see here I am marking in again in red <coughs> independent of your load and ink your reg in will become 0 because that is a priority. So, reset gets the highest priority that means reset is closest to the output in this diagram right reset is on the highest max. Now, when reset is 0 then you go in and your load is 1 load is 1 ok when your load is 1 then you get in here and your reset is 0 of course, this is 1 0 reset is 0. So, you will get in here. So, reg will become in when reset is 0 and load is 1 when reset and load both are 0 then you consider this if ink is 1 then you have that remembered value right the remembered value is given as increment 16 here that will be increment plus 1 that will come here uh, and then this will go. So, these are all m max 16 all these muxes you are putting here are max 16. So, that 16 bits will get routed. So, so when your reset is 0 and your load 0 and your increment is 1 then you basically get uh, this value right. So, when your increment is 0 load equals 0 reset is equal to 0 uh, nothing, nothing happens. So, so we need not uh, really bother about it ok. When your increment is 0 uh, load is 0 reset is 0 the register never changes. So, I do not really care what is the engine here. So, I can put a false if you want there. So, this is how the priority logic is coded. So, what is driving uh, uh, reg in is this 
larger circuitry which is a priority logic and that priority is basically established using different multiplexers. The multiplexer crosses to the output here, uh, output of this circuit here which is this M16, uh, <coughs> which is this M16 as you see here is for reset and the next one is for load and next one is for INC and uh, this is how and this is basically how you are realizing this. So, you can basically call this out as reg out and this out will go through two inverters, two not 16s, two not 16s to basically get this output and this reg out you can use it for, uh, this reg out can be used for incrementation, the remembered value right, because I cannot use out because in output variable cannot be used as an input. So, I will have a reg out and then an out, we have seen in P2 why it is not possible, this is a small, small twist that we need to do here. But the way we have implemented this program counter uh, teaches you some lot of things uh, in terms of how do you realize priority logic and uh, what is priority logic, how do we realize it. In addition, we are also seeing this uh, how <coughs> the, uh, the different functionalities of this program counter are basically realized using these signals. So, this is uh, how the program counter is made. So, with this we uh, sort of uh, come to a conclusion on what are the different memory elements that we need to construct. So, we have seen in the previous module, uh, we have assumed a D flip flop, that is the smallest element and we have also told how D flip flop can be constructed using transistors. Now, we assume that D flip flop exists. Now, using the D flip flop we made bit, from bit we made registers, while registers we made RAM 8, RAM 64, then RAM 512, then RAM 4K, then RAM 16K. We can use, we can build much more RAMs like that. Then uh, we also constructed uh, the program counter and this all put together is enough for building our architecture. So, so <coughs> this also summarizes what you need to do for your project 3A and 3B, there are two parts. In the 3A you will have bits, the program counter and the RAM 8, RAM 64 and in the 3B you will have RAM 512, RAM 4K and RAM 16K, each are all very, very small code, right. We have all those things we have explained. So, so the, the, the entire process will not take more than a couple of hours for you to finish this entire thing. So, I suggest that, sorry, uh, before you go back to module 3.5, uh, you basically finish off this uh, project 3A, 3B, right. Thank you.